Philly <laughs> Skate Podcast. Cast, cast, cast. Trying a different open. We're launched. And Philly 3 0'd the Cardinals this past weekend. So welcome back. I am your host, Anthony Caputi. And Jackson might be your host next week if he can't get 100 points in fantasy. Leave it up to Patrick Mahomes tonight just to be able to get, uh, if he gets 20, 21, I think you're good. Which, uh, I need 26 from, uh, from Mahomes this week to 26. Uh, break 100. The deal is if I don't break 100, I got to host the uh, podcast next week. So far this season, I think, what is it? We're week five, four, four out of, uh, or no, what am I talking about? Three out of the past four weeks, he hasn't scored over 26. So high chance I'm hosting. Maybe, maybe not got, walking in. I don't know how I got not, out of this because I scored 50 points this week. Uh, I just picked on Jackson because yeah, he was I mean, messing around with my trade. So, you know, I just was like, if Jackson doesn't go over 100, I was like, you know what? Nah, you got to host my guy. Brit, Brits has hosted before. Maybe harsher for not accepting my – or the rest of the league for vetoing my trade. That was a fair trade. Bro. <laughs> fair trade. You accepted it. We were here for two hours. Brits was a win. I mean, it was a good trade. I mean, look, Trub, Trub only outscored. I, 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 I Kabuti traded um, – what Brees was the Hall, trade? Go, go through the trade. Brees Hall and Chris Olave for Nick Chubb and Dallas Goddard. If you if you looked at <clears throat> the numbers this week, it would probably work out to be the same, like total combined. Points. I mean, I, honestly, looking at the trade now, it's kind of a fair deal. Uh, I didn't, shut up! I, I, shut I wasn't up. one of the people who voted to veto it, but yeah, I, but you I, were I didn't one of the first all because I thought to, I didn't think yeah. it was actually going to get vetoed. <laughs> I thought we were only it only yeah, it only takes four votes to veto it. It was literally yeah. after we made the trade, it was already at three, like immediately within the first hour. Yeah, I just needed I needed uh, Brits to uphold it with one more vote, but you know, whatever. It's okay. Hayden Hurst came through for me anyway. Picked him up off the wa- waiver I wire. I, so. from- I told you to pick him up too. And yeah, look whatever. Look at you. All right, so let's let's break down the birds and then let's get into the Dallas game, right? So first question for you guys, because I got some stats we can we can rattle off for the offense for the defense. This game didn't look like the last couple that we've seen for the Birds. It was a little messy. I I share the blame because I wanted Kyler to score some points on my fantasy team. So it's just one of those things when you hope for it, it actually happens. So I feel like, you know, I'm not that disappointed with the Birds this week. But most people, you know, I think they can uh, look at a few things that could have been done better. Do you think the Birds, Birds meaning Eagles, played down this week where the Cardinals played up? A mix of both. What are you guys feeling here as far as, uh, you know, just the general theme of this game? Tough to say. I don't know. I, I, I just knew this game was going to be a tough game. We talked about it last week. Um, or not. Well, yeah, last week. And um, I, I we, ha- we every time we go there, it's, we lose. So it's like I, coming out with a win just feels like we weren't supposed to win this game. Like, I just feel like it was a trap game. Even though I said talk myself yeah, out of it being a trap gonna, game, I was gonna say we all said thirty something, so we can't. I don't know. I know, but like I, I that's us getting ourselves hyped up for a big win. You know, like we're just gonna keep it rolling. Uh, okay. I don't okay. know. It's it, going to Arizona and getting a win on the road like that. I think is just huge. Um, obviously we didn't play as dominant as we used at, as we uh, had been this week or this year. Uh, but I'm happy with the win. Came down what came down to the end. I mean, we never gave up. The defense like stepped up when we needed them to. So I'm happy with the win. How could you not be? Win's win. Yeah, I mean, I you gotta say five and zero oh feels good. You know, it feels, feels great. Feels good, man. Yeah. Feels good. Um, man. I mean, of course. To, I don't know that game. Defense was a little sus. You gotta we gotta be honest there. Um, I mean. To you could fair, say that, but 17, 17 points. points. I mean, yeah, they only they only gave up 17 points, but I feel like it had uh, essences of that red uh, carpet defense that Gannon uh, played against, uh, played last year. <laughs> I think honestly, I think yeah. honestly, like I was saying last week, the dink and dunk is effective against us. If you're willing to just be patient and uh, take small chunk yard plays every once in a while go for a big one uh, and just avoid playing hero ball against us. I think it works. I think they did it. I think they did that. I think they showed that it works against us. You can really just eat the clock. Yeah. Um, hopefully in the future, Gannon's going to be better at dialing up blitzes. Uh, when Maddox comes back, I think he's going to tighten up the secondary. Um, but I think with everything, even if you're like the best team in the league, no matter what, you're going to have a game where you're not playing at like your peak level. Right. And I think even not playing at a peak level and playing a Cardinals team who played better than they uh, were expected to play, I think 
Yeah. I think we can all say the Cardinals didn't look bad. They looked like they're actually a pretty solid team. I don't know. I think I was happy with the win. Um, Milton Williams did get a tip on that uh, kickoff at yeah, the end. That was confirmed. I thought okay. that was sick. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know. Happy to be five and zero. Oh. You know, you can't. Every game can't be pretty, but all the all that really matters is the win. Nobody's gonna really remember. I mean, right. even if it is a dink and dunk offense that's that's doing well against our defensive scheme, it feels like it. I'm fine with that when you have this kind of offense with Jalen, high-powered offense that can score very quickly, control the game. So I, I still think, looking at this game, I feel okay with that. I mean, they they were picking us apart with those dink and duck plays. Marquise Brown, just get it to him in open space. Even doesn't have to be past the first down, you know, first down the line. He can just break open for some space. And they had a lot of speed on their offense. But, you know, and and I, I mean, you say the, Car- the Cardinals look good, Jackson. They did, but it's still. I mean, they put up seventeen, and they still. Did not. They score just in the seem. They quarter. just. They just seem like a mediocre team that like just can't do anything too special. Like I look at Kyler Murray, and I looked at him. I feel like he almost looked like the Jalen of last year. And what does he have? One, two more years on Jalen. <laughs> I feel like it was this dig and dunk, not anything exciting. Just you know, go out to for his life. Just, you know that I mean, running to his life for his life when he had to, and it worked a couple times, and, which was sad. And it worked because he's Kyler Murray, because he can break ankles, and he has you know probably better agility than even Jalen. Even Jalen, I mean, Jalen yeah. breaks ankles, but well, um, he just he, that- he, he does he can't read the field well. I think downfield, you know, for those long big plays. But um, do you think uh, do you think that Kyler's scramble ability played an effect on like? or they had an effect on our defense. Like, I think maybe Absolutely. his ability to scramble out of the pocket probably. 100%. Yeah. He extended a lot of plays, drives with, you know, with those abilities. I mean, but then again, it works well for our type of team with our offense. If they're going to take, you know, 10 minutes just to get down and field dink and dunk and extend plays through, you know, scrambling, like, it's not really going to work against us. As long as we have like, a lead, which we usually do. Which we held on to for, yeah. the, you know, pretty much throughout this game. So I want to touch on the Kyler scrambling point, just because, like, I think his scramble ability, while it didn't cost them the game at the end, I think his uh, his little slide uh, didn't put them in the best position to win because they were driving, and he slides, it's yeah. fourth and one, or what is it, third, three, yeah. third and one, and he spikes the ball. So, um, no, I, I think to that point, right, like I've always felt that, like, and I'm looking at the stats right now, and, like, Kyler – and roughly like 20 yards less than Jalen, but Jalen had um, two touchdowns and had two touchdowns with his scrambles, right? So I think Kyler, while being a really good scrambler, I don't think uses it as deliberately as Jalen does. Because, like, you look at the Jacksonville game, for example, right? That, like, when we were down 14 zip, who scrambles in and gets us a touchdown? Jalen, right? Cardinals game, two rushing touchdowns, Jalen, right? Like, he, he scrambles or he puts the ball on the ground when he needs to. And I think that, that progression right there is a big difference than last year where it was i don't like i i literally look one way and then i'm running right like he he feels comfortable enough to like okay i can scramble when i need to versus scrambling all the time i don't think to kaputi to your point kyler feels like he has to scramble all the time because he doesn't have a target he feels like he doesn't have a target he looks looks completely yeah Yeah. well because deon because deandre hopkins is on the field right i mean if you look at jalen hurts jalen hurts has Devontae smith and aj brown I mean, there's there's still a lot of things in this offense that I take issue with, and I I can kind of go down, you know, the list. But I mean, I'm still happy with the win. Jalen with 15 runs, you know, on average per game, seven of those were QB sneaks. I mean, um, you know, Sirani mentioned still it today, high. so that's it's it's high, but you know, it's that's something you kind of worry about putting him in that position. But at the end mm-hmm. of the day, a lot of those runs, you know, he can break free. He, he slides very well, um, and I just think. You know, high completion rate for this for this game too, seventy two percent. You know, crosses sixty eight percent average for the year. So, Jalen's Jalen's doing well. I'm not worried about him. Um, you know, he we I think we talked about this too. Like we're all gonna have an off game in the season, and I think this was an off game, and we still come away mm-hmm. with a win. So exactly. that's something to be happy about. Yeah, so, yeah I think speaking off thing, games. God. One thing I wanted to say is I feel like this happened at like the ideal point of the season. Um, I don't know if we want to admit it or not, but I think this Cowboys game is going to be one of our biggest tests. I think it's probably our biggest test yet, and it might be one of our biggest yeah. tests for the whole season, the way uh, the Packers have been playing. Um, I think, <laughs> I think, I think, honestly, going down 
to uh, Phoenix, getting in a game where it's close, where it's down to the wire. We could have potentially lost if they uh, had a su successful drive that uh, at the end of the game, or even that pick wasn't turned over. I feel like either in either one of those scenarios, we could have potentially lost. Um, I think it is a nice reminder that like, no matter what everybody's saying, and no matter the mindset in the building of we need to work every day, it's like they, anybody could lose to anybody on any day, and they got to really take uh, every game seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of off games, AJ Brown three for thirty two. Jackson, that you know, okay, I'm gonna, here's I, eleven. Jackson, Jackson, how do you feel I, about AJ Brown going three for thirty two? I've got to own up to it. I, uh, Caputi was saying earlier that. He uh, has Kyler Murray on his team, and potentially the fact that he was wishing for Kyler Murray to do okay was why Kyler Murray did good. I've got the opposite effect, man. I drafted A.J. Brown in every single league, so if he has an off season, I take full responsibility for it. Take full accountability. Well, listen, I, I, don't, I don't put that on A.J. Brown, and this, that's part of what I take issue with, right? Like three catches, three great catches from A.J. Brown on the first drive. Doesn't go to him the whole, the whole rest of the game. Um, I mean, three, I'm just running down the list, right? Um, two screens, two screen plays to Dallas Goddard. They work out for the most part. Three screen plays to Devontae Smith, one on a third and 21. So it's it's some of those plays, you know, I can look at this game and say offensively, I don't like the way things are schemed up as much when you need to get A.J. Brown open in space. Yeah. Um, you, like, you, like you need to. Like I, I get um, – I'll go to you in a second, Jackson, but – I get where each game is going to be a mix of Devontae going off versus AJ or maybe a mix of both, but this was different. You needed to get him in space somehow, make it work for him. He's, he's one of the strongest guys on the team on that offense. And, you know, we'll get yards even if you get him in the, in the screen. So I just, I was kind of cautious, you know, not, not too, a um, little worried there about not getting AJ Brown some touches there. Well, it's like it's like the first game when uh, Devontae got zero uh, catches. Yeah, I think uh, and I think it'll go back to normal. AJ Brown, uh, I think so too. Should be a yeah. focal point of our offense, and I think he will be going uh, continuing the season. One thing I was gonna say is you were talking about we need to scheme it to the right players, and what scared me was I thought this game almost seemed like we schemed it the same way we schemed like the first few games from last uh, last season, both on yeah. offense and defense, honestly. There was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of screens. Uh, there weren't as many runs as we're used to. Uh, the defense was back to being more prevent than I think we would want. And um, we didn't have Jalen throwing uh, as many bombs as I was hoping he would. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was a, it was a definitely a different look to the, uh, to the team this week than we have been used to. But I don't know. I just think I think they had a game plan and they stuck to it. Maybe they saw something in the Cardinals' defense um, that they thought would be like what, how the way they played was gonna be work like gonna be the best way to play against this team, and I think they just stuck with it. Maybe they should have gotten away from it um, at some point, but they got came out with the win, so it's it's not super easy to just say that it didn't work, you know. And to be fair, I think we're like uh, maybe me mainly. <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm uh, shitting on the offense right now, but I think honestly we're. I know they're doing a good job having Driscoll in. I think Opeta was in, and uh, Cam Jurgens came in, and then Kelsey played the rest of the game with like a sprained ankle. The line's not full health, like fully healthy, and I feel like that could potentially be a big reason why we're not playing as well as we normally do. Yeah, I mean that's for me, we right. leaned away from the run. Injuries it's, are starting to scare a, me a little bit too. A lot of injuries happening, especially on the line. Luckily, we're deep. Yeah, yeah, next, that's that's where death comes in. That makes makes the team different. Still though, you want to have those guys towards the end but, of the season healthy. Those top guys. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, other things that I noticed that the Cardinals did, you know, uh, as far as like blitzes, you know, I didn't see this on a ton of plays, but just looking through the highlights, um, you know, it was I think they showed eight blitzing. They ended up sending six, dropping two back. So that's when you know you gotta have that quick release to AJ Brown or Demonte Smith in space. Jalen couldn't get it off, and, and they got a sack on us on that. So as far as other teams looking, you know, around the league, looking at the birds right now, I think the concept is, or the word is, you know, blitz Jalen, make him freak out. Um, I think that's not going to happen every single time, and that's where I think Jalen has progressed this year to the point where he can have that quick release. He can trust himself to make that play. 
as opposed to, you know, because scrambling in that case for him didn't really change anything on that play. Well, that so strike we... to Goddard at the end of the game, uh, he had people right in his face and he threw that dart right to him yeah. to, to convert the first for the first. Sure. Yeah, and over, over the safety too. Like, it was like a nice little touch pass in the, fa- in the face of pressure. It was good. So That's just not, a, say. not just not a lot of electrifying plays. I mean, dink and dunks for us on our side too. I mean, the Goddard to Devontae Smith. That was the name of the game. There's nothing really going across the middle, slant to A.J. Brown, things that we've seen from previous games that really progressed things upfield and got the, the offense kind of gelling and moving. So I feel like um, feel like we just got to get back in a rhythm. Honestly, I think the defense played well. Interception by C.J. G.J., the son Reddick sack, which, you know, we, we've been asking for the whole season. Um, and for Kyler Murray, the Cardinals offense, I still don't think they look great, even though, you know, they, they have kind of made a comeback towards the end there. They've scored zero points in the first quarter of this entire season. Still, to, to so, yeah. they have issues. continuing the streak. They have issues on offense. So I mean, so we, uh, we yeah. got what we got what a win, but you know, wasn't a, a, hum, a humbling win. Get get some feedback. And I think and, they're gonna uh, look at it the same way adjust. too. I think that whole the whole room will see it the same way. Like we won this game, but we have work to do. But as a perfect transition point, unless you guys have any other points on this game, I feel like it's a good time for a type of win like that in preparation for Dallas week. Yeah. So we got we got the Cowboys coming up. We know how much this means to us. I think I'll be at the Sunday night game there, cheering on the birds. Um, black Weird jerseys, flex. black jerseys. Uh, <laughs> it's, going, it's going down. It's going down in Philly Sunday I'm excited. I'm excited for the Cowboys. I got a few more things I want to discuss about the, uh, the, uh, the Cardinals game real quick. First off, no. what did you guys think of uh, Kelsey? Do you guys think he's hurt? Do you uh, do you like him playing with the uh, ankle uh, the ankle sprain? He said, I think he said he's got a lower ankle sprain. Um, I know. I feel like no matter what it is, he's gonna fucking play. But uh, what do you guys think? I don't know. I'm scared he's gonna get hurt. I'm also not. I don't know. Uh, I like him playing. I feel he's badass. Because I, I think that's just how he is, and I, we definitely needed him. So I mean, I think him playing obviously helped us get the win. Um, if he if he needs time though, I think he needs to take take. An, maybe take this next game off if he needs to. I know it's Dallas. Yeah. I know we want the win really bad. But, like, we got to look at – I know it's Dallas, but we got to look farther ahead with that 5-0 and right now. And say, say Amala would switch to center, right? Or would they put Jurgens in? I think I they think would put, throw Jurgens right in. What about, when I he mean, was out uh, for that second, they put uh, Jurgens in. But are you thinking, like, they'll just game plan to put Say Amalo there uh, from the start? I was thinking that because I remember before we drafted Jurgens, Say Amalo was, like – I think it was like because we had Herbig who was kind of the backup to Kelsey, and then Samala was the emergency, right? So like, my well, my thing also, is like, also Dickerson was backup to Kelsey too. So like the three of Dickerson us. snapped before. Yeah, so Dickerson could do it. I mean, like I I personally could have given it to Dallas week. I would much rather see Driscoll take one of the guard spots, move Samala or Dickerson to the middle. Yeah, Driscoll. Driscoll. Driscoll's been really good at yeah. one of the guard spots. Yeah, at, le- at left tackle, he's been playing left tackle. I thought he's been playing guard. Uh, oh, I think he's been filling in for Mylata. Yeah, okay, that's what it is. Okay, yeah, so he's at guard. Yeah. So then you would okay. So then you would probably kick in one of Dickerson or Sam Malo, and I then get Dickerson your back got guard in there. Yeah, he's, he's back. Oh, he's I think back. he's. Yep. I mean, personally, because it's Dallas week. Like, I don't know if the rook's ready for Dallas. So, like, maybe let one of the more experienced guys call out the signals at center, and then have another guy come in at guard, or even I shift Driscoll like in and. and pull. And, or shift Driscoll in and put Dillard at left tackle. It's yeah. <sighs> Dillard is healthy again, so he is back. I I don't know. I I agree. That's you know it's a good thing to good way to kind of brainstorm and game plan. But I think what they would do is just throw in Cam. I think that's why they drafted him. Kelsey, you know, worked with them on the scouting to to get him to replace him, and he he came in right away. Um, yeah. You know, it's you're right. It's different. They can game plan it ahead of time now. Um, if if Kelsey's a high risk, I don't play him. I. No. I Damn. If he's if he's if they're confident good luck that it's, him yeah, 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 good luck holding him down. Um, no, but if if it's really low risk, no risk at all. You know, maybe even rotate Cam Jurgens, get some uh, get some reps, get some reps, yeah, give him some reps, and you know, slowly work Kelsey back in the lineup. I consider that as a possible option too. Yeah. One last thing I had for the game, at least. Jax, can I jump in here for a sec? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Dickerson, I'm pretty sure, snapped with Hurts, too, at Alabama. I am almost positive that was a thing. Sure, there's so, a like, connection there, yeah. 
Yeah, there's still there's still there's got to be some connection there, so I would not be surprised to see. Dickerson well, that was the thought, there. right? Two years ago, yeah. that was the thought. We're drafting the Kelsey replacement. He came in. He yeah. looked really good at guard. You know, Cam Jurgens yeah. only a center. He's the true center. You know, behind Kelsey once he retires. Well, that's but, what pretty soon our whole yeah. line's going to be Kelsey replacements. <laughs> I mean, seems not like a true. bad thing. Not a bad problem to have. Um, and then let, maybe one last note on the Cardinals kicker that or kicker the dicker. Dicker the kicker looking pretty damn good. He, look, for, dude, he, looked, uh, he looked like a normal kicker. Just a coming, just coming, yeah. yeah. Here's what I'll say. I like Dicker the kicker. He's fine. He seems like uh, calm, cool, and collected. But dude, he's got nothing on Jake Elliott still. So. Oh, no. Obviously. I know. Obviously. He's not being replaced. So it's just. It, it. Yeah, no, well, of course. We're not. We're, we're, are we starting kicker controversies here? <laughs> and, uh, I'm trying not to. We, kicker controversies. So, uh, geez. I don't think you have to worry about that just yet. All right, it, it is Dallas week. You got Micah Parsons. Okay, go ahead, One Jack. last thing. One last thing. Last week, we had uh, discussed who was Zach Ertz uh, in the return oh, of Zach Ertz going to be high-fiving him in the center of the field. I they Honestly, I, I, mean, ex- I missed it, but the Eagles <laughs> uploaded Zach Ertz in the middle of the field high-fiving people uh, on YouTube, so there's actually a video of it. Yeah. Um, yeah I watched right. it back. I know who high-fived him first. It wasn't any of our guesses. It was uh, none other than Sean Bradley. <laughs> well, it's not Bradley. Uh, high fiving first is kind of a stupid thing. Third to get. was Goddard. I, that was the closest one that I thought anybody could have said. Yeah, I saw that. Did one. they do? Did I he do a jersey he... swap? That's the more important question. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Didn't did anybody it say Goddard though? I saw the Goddard. I saw the Goddard thing. I saw the Goddard one. But somebody did anybody said, predict Goddard? I think somebody said it. I think at least. One. I think I think I said that. I think I, I think told. I think I said. Yeah, I said Goddard. Congratulations, Harsha, you win. <laughs> so now trade me, uh, yeah, you gotta trade me Joe Mixon for uh, a bag of potatoes. <laughs> oh, you're out of your mind, dude. <laughs> 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 for uh, Eckler. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, our taste. So I, so I um, miss, I miss, uh, I misspoke. By the way, Dickerson did not snap for Jalen Hurts. Dickerson was about two to three years after after Jalen Hurts at Alabama. Well, Good okay. to know. Wow. Good to yeah. know. Okay, it is Dallas week. We know what uh, the, we all remember the shirt that uh, Sierra wore last year in, in, in preparation. Um, they have our number. You got Micah Parsons leading that crazy ass defense over there, um, just making Matt Stafford look like a joke. Um, how do we scheme up against these guys from an offensive, offensive standpoint and then obviously defensively against Cooper Rush? How do we make him make mistakes? First, first off, I feel like we've got to control time and possession because I feel like this team, uh, it's I, well, depending on uh, if Dak is back, but I feel like I'm assuming he's not going to be in Cooper Rush to be playing. I feel like they're dinking and dunking a little bit, which is our our nemesis number one, and then they're running the ball a lot, which uh, we either are good against or bad against. I think we got to play a lot of uh, Jordan Davis and try and control the game by running as much as possible. I think it's gonna be a yeah. high scoring game though. I mean, I I think yeah. this is gonna be a game where we're gonna have to maybe. Do a little bit of dink and dunking ourselves. Just, just kind of get the ball out quickly. Um, I think run the ball for sure. Um, maybe see if we can find it. Like, I mean, their their secondary is not crazy good. So, I mean, I think we take the shots when we yeah. get them. Um, but we're gonna have to get the ball out fast for sure because their line and and linebackers are vicious, vicious right now. They're they're making everybody in the league look like they're. A rookie, so uh, it's going to be a tough game. I wish it wasn't going to be a tough game. I thought maybe at the beginning of the season we were going to take a sweep on them easy. It's not looking like that right now. It's going to be a game of two dominant, dominant yeah. defenses. Yeah, it's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird game. It is. I mean, um, we. I would say that we have the better offense, but you know, it's it's going to be a defensive game. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, harsh. I was going to say that re read the defenses right. So our defense might have an easier, a little bit easier of a job because it doesn't look like Dak going to play because so his surgery was for like two days it's coming up on four weeks and he would have to make sick quote-unquote significant strides so our defense might have to game plan for a cooper rush type of quarterback and i think that plays well into our pass rushers right just because i mean dak prescott's more mobile than cooper rush so i, I will take a, a pocket pass so that our guys can pin their pin their ears and go after versus you know like dak prescott who can make some plays outside the pocket if you well, make Cooper Rush pass, which goes to I think what what Jackson's point, where you have to really stop the run here, and that's I think that's the critical point. Tony, well, Pollard, ideally, especially. ideally we get to him and we kind of have like a game plan like we had against uh, 
Wentz or uh, Cousins where we can, like you guys are saying, just get to him, bluster him. I don't yeah. think he's played a defense as good as ours yet. So hopefully um, yeah. we'll be able to expose him. Yeah. I mean, I think if you score, like, I think if you score 24, 27 points, this is a win. I think that's, I think that's, that's what they're good. averaging, like, low 20s, right? They're not, they're not scoring yeah, they a lot at all. They're just keeping yeah. keep teams I mean, down. Look, look, at, look at Cooper Rush's stats. I mean, he's not putting up. He's, yeah, he's doing great. He's, you know, being a game manager, but he's not doing anything crazy to take over these games. He's just, you know, not making mistakes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Give it, mistakes, Lamber, give it to CD Lamb or give it to Zeke. Yeah, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have to force some mistakes. Turnovers are gonna be huge. We, I think, if we win the turnover batter, battle, we're gonna win the game for sure. Just because, they take away more possessions from them, and that offense isn't high powered enough to beat us. I th Brits, my one thing to that is Micah Parsons, the X factor, right? Like, if yeah. we get a turnover and Micah Parsons like kills us, right? Especially with us, like we could potentially potentially starting a rookie center, right? Like. I would trust Jason Kelsey calling up the protection slides against the Micah Parsons, right? But if it's a Cam Jurgens, like, it's going to be a battle all night long because that guy, he's an animal. Uh, like, yeah. I hate to say that, but Micah Parsons is nearly unguardable sometimes. Yeah, he's like, is it going to be like Micah Parsons on lane, or is it going to be Micah Parsons on potentially Mylotta or uh, Driscoll? They use him similarly to, like, what the Cardinals do with Isaiah Simmons, but it's not as much in the secondary, so, like, no secondary, but like anywhere across the front seven, you could find Micah Parsons. Like right. it's it's he shouldn't be that good. Like he shouldn't be able to cover a running back and then go off the edge and like toast your left tackle. Yeah. It's crazy because he's not even like super big. He's like, not uh, ooh. I mean he is. But I mean, yeah, but like you don't I, don't know. I know I know I know what you mean, Bert. He's yeah, not like, you shouldn't be able to go against like like left tackles like he is. You know? His speed, I, okay. his speed, and, his speed and power. 6'3", 245. Yeah, I feel like that's good size for a DN. You think about, like, Brandon Donald like, under six foot. Like, uh, yeah, I guess you're, Reddick. I, guess I feel like they're big. not, like, look that much big. bigger than that. He's just, he's just lean. He's lean I mean, muscle, that's, he's built that's, some that's bulk. 245 pounds of muscle is kind of what right. this right. is. Kind of, right. This is the problem. Um, <laughs> listen, Micah Parsons is going to be a problem no matter what. The thing is, how do you limit him? I, I, I think you get the run going. I honestly, I think that's, that's like, more. You run at him. I, I think you just run at him full force. You got Sanders. You might get. Um, you have mm -hmm. Gamewell. Um, uh, maybe mix in Trey Sermon a little bit too. I think we didn't see him too too much in the last Cardinals game, but I think um, you know, I'd like to see that power back. Come. We gotta get Jordan Mailata involved. <laughs> As a running back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, if we're stops. <laughs> Bring it back. Honestly, we'd uh, he might just be able to get like one rush each each drive and just take it all the way to the house. I, <laughs> I was gonna say, I think uh, if we're gonna be dinking and dunking, I would like to see us throw in a couple more uh, screens to Goddard and maybe a couple to AJ Brown. They're so good at yards after catch. I feel like they're the two we want to get uh, the ball to on uh, screens. Quez Watkins over the top if they start doing that because they'll oh, yeah. free up the back end of the defense. I'm surprised we haven't done it with AJ Brown yet. That's that's the one thing that does surprise me, you know. I think it's common. I don't. I think they didn't want to showcase too much right last week. I think it, I, I, they'll they'll spring AJ Brown loose once or twice. And I feel like I've seen it a couple times this season, but just not last game. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Your fantasy team. <laughs> Anthony, why would you say such a thing? What? <laughs> I know that was you, Archer. And you know, what? even no. if I even if I played him, even if he played well, I wouldn't have won. My biggest problem was that I didn't play uh, Taysom Hill. And I played yeah. Conklin. You got me zero yeah. points. That was your mistake. That's a rough, rough, rough week to do that. Um, in general, NF NFC beast. Are you guys Dude. worried? I mean, it's hard not to be. I can't believe the freaking Giants like, beat the Packers, dude. Like they're somewhat real teams, right? They're at least average. I mean, Dallas. Uh, no, listen, Dallas is the good. Packers, they, they beat the Packers. I know it's Dallas. Is yeah, a good but, team. The Giants. Dallas. I don't. I still don't see them as a good team. If the, as four yeah, and one, the Giants are frauds coaching. as much as the Packers are frauds. I think they got they got good um, coaching for sure. Uh, Brian Dayball's doing a really good job over there. But uh, when you look at their uh, their guys, like you can't really name anybody that you're scared of on both sides of the ball. You know, so it's well, like yeah. So it's like I don't know how we don't go to win a game. I with wouldn't them. necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily say that, Brits. Besides Saquon, I mean, but like, 
Saquon can't run like rule a team. That's a Daniel back. Jones is way better than we give him credit for. But I think that's just true. Not Giants. true. No, that's not true. Daniel Jones is perfectly <laughs> rated where he is. He stinks. <laughs> He's just not good. He's just not a good quarterback. They should move so, on as soon as possible. Okay, so hold on, hold on a minute. So as much as we're gonna we're gonna trash their offense, you might have something um, there. The defense, I think, deserves a little bit of credit. Um, the defense is their strong I mean, suit for sure. But yeah, I think Xavier McKinney's a great free safety. They got him late. Um, Dory Jackson. Th- oh, Dory Jackson. Yeah, he just went out last game, but he would be another one. Um, actually, speaking of uh, Cowboys, Jalen Smith, the ex-Cowboy linebacker, um, he's on the Giants. Yeah, I'm looking at their depth chart right now. Interesting. No, well, no. Speaking of speaking of uh, ex. Uh, I say, uh, not ex Cowboys. Ex- Speaking of ex Eagles, uh, uh, Jason Peters. Do you guys think we're gonna be able to blow him up? I feel like we will. I think I mean, he's cold. Oh, he's he's keep up with our defensive line. I mean, yeah. I'm not really worried about Jason Peters. I feel like he's not gonna be able to keep up with us. I, I will say, I will give him some credit for being 40 years old and doing a decent job at a guard position. Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought we should have done with him, but it, I, it's we were stupid about it, but. Um, yeah. Reed Giants, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau as well. Um, he's the DM what, they got in the draft. Is he not playing great this year? I mean, I mean, I know he's a rookie, but... He's a rookie, but, like, all right, let's take a look at his stats. I mean... I haven't heard his name come up too much. I mean, he's he's still in there, right? Like, he's still tackling and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, no sacks yet, but, I mean, you know, he's still... Yeah, right. He's still one to keep an eye on. Like, it's not like you gotta, you know, you can let it go. I mean, it's not like... The outside guy? Uh, try outside. Yeah, why he's listed as a linebacker on the outside, but he's he's like a he's a three four pass rusher for sure. Gotcha. Right. He's like on the outside linebacking, and I mean, look, as much as we're gonna dip on the Giants, right? Like four and one is four and one. You can't hate him, and I think I Brian Dable has a has a lot to do with that, right? Like I would like I'm gonna look. Hold on, I'm gonna look at their schedule because I actually want to see Tennessee, the Tennessee Panthers. Pa- pa- Packers was a real win. I mean, I'll put it this know. way. I'm not going. I'm. I'm not going into that game against the Giants. I know we don't play them for a while, but saying this is a free win because I—that's why I expected it at the beginning of the season. That's not what I'm saying now. It's gonna be. A, so they—I mean, game. they play Baltimore next week. So I mean, I like I'm—I'm I'm curious to see how they do it because Baltimore is historically a strong team. So I'm curious to see how they do against them. I think that'll be a test. Um, yeah, I mean, they're honestly, they're... though, this 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 schedule is kind of garbage. I'm all, looking at all it right now. Schedules like, are all the NFC has as easy schedules. That's true. Like, I mean, teams well, suck this year in the NFL. Uh, I mean, it's weird. For real. It's weird for right real. now. There's a couple well, of teams I mean, that you're these, like, these guys, like the Rams look terrible. Like, of course, when the rest of the league looks great, the NFC East is like terrible. Mm-hmm. Like the like the seven and nine team is going to the playoffs. But yeah. you know, of course, when we're doing well, everybody else sucks. I don't know. We could be potentially weird. seeing three teams go to the playoffs. <laughs> Why? Huh. If the Giants make the playoffs, that'd be absurd. But I mean. The Giants, the Giants fans will be throwing parties like it's a Super Bowl if they make the playoffs. You're you're right though. I mean, the, the Giants game is no longer a scheduled win the way the Commanders are, and yeah. you know the the da- Cowboys, no matter who's at the quarterback position, is always just a a tricky game. Yeah, it's just always yeah. a dog fight between no us. No matter what, no matter what. I, I do want to touch on something with the Commanders that involves the NFC East. So I don't know if you guys saw Ron Rivera's press conference. I only saw a bit of it, but like he he was asked the question. And it was a really good question. He's like, uh, the reporter goes, hey, hey, Ron, what do you think is the difference between you, your team, and the rest of the NFC? Because the rest of the NFC is like 4-1 and one or 5-0. and oh. Quarterback? That's exactly what he said. He literally said, quarterback. Other teams have been able to build around a quarterback. Oh, my God. That's so bad, dude. Like, I, I want to hear some Insta reactions. Yeah, I want to hear some reactions. Because when I saw that on Instagram, I was like, whoa. Are we taking this out of context? Because that seems like too much from Ron Rivera. I want want to see it, but like I saw saw the clip on Instagram, so like maybe it is out of context. So Say say that is true and did say that. Like, I mean, would you really take Daniel Jones over Carson Wentz, though? It's (sighs) it's kind of – it's getting to the point where it's close, but I think I'd still take Carson. Right now? I I might take Daniel Jones right now, honestly. I'm still Carson. saying I'm taking I'm Daniel still, Jones over Carson right I'm now. I'm still saying sure. Daniel Jones is really bad, but Carson just can't. I know. He can't avoid a sack, man. To save his life. Carson okay, so, went 
playing in the NFL anymore. It's, it's that's the bottom line. I mean, Daniel Jones doesn't do um, anything for his team. He doesn't even throw touchdowns. Like he, he doesn't Daniel do Jones anything. In game. But Carson's more lose. of a more of a liability than Daniel yeah. Jones is a. If that makes sense, like da- Daniel I, Jones floor is higher than once. Once is a walking ten I, turnover. Daniel Jones has a chance of going three and out. <laughs> I will agree with um, that, Harsh. Daniel Jones floor is probably lower or higher than Carson's floor. <laughs> Yeah, because well, like, floor like, okay, is so, rock bottom. Well, okay, so like, okay, so here's my thing, right? So like, when you look at Daniel Jones, right, the, the only gifts of that man is like him, like what, what was it the one time, like he was sprinting against us and running like, 98 yards. Yeah, like running 90, like he was running and he like Falling fell over his feet. Okay, whatever, like shit happens. Like I'm not gonna, you know, yeah. bash him for that. It was funny to watch though, and that gets great, but. When you look at like okay, when you look at Daniel Jones' decision making, right? Like I would argue Carson Wentz is like worse, right? Yeah. When it comes to like throwing, right? Like Daniel Jones, like yeah, demand like yeah. the man, like he's not like he's not gonna lose like he might lose you one game. Carson Wentz could lose you a season. Him just Carson doing Wentz, stuff. Carson Wentz is like Tom Hanks from that like uh, movie Big or whatever, except he was like a or whatever the movie is, but except he's like a seven like year old football player who just got like transported into like an nfl player's body he's an idiot he's a straight up idiot well he doesn't okay. know how to play football what, what you're what you're saying is right but like <laughs> let's be let's be real here you're saying that jalen jones has has good decision making or better decision making you're only saying that because this year brian debo not letting him throw the fucking ball yeah <laughs> he's like he's, I mean, he's, he's throwing the ball 20 yeah. times a game max they're lying up in wildcat like seven times yeah. a game and la- I mean, like the last couple seasons this guy's had like a one to one interception ratio. Like that's true. <laughs> yeah, but, that, but that's a sign that's a sign they, of a good coach though. I, right, you're right. right. Not, you're right. Yeah. He's where he's dealing with what he has to work with, but it, you should call him the New York Saquons at this point. <laughs> exactly. Go, go <laughs> ahead, Zach. Go ahead. You guys, I think I think the the court the quarterback of uh the commanders versus the quarterback of the Giants is a very interesting conversation. But I feel like there's a couple things we gotta discuss, like uh, the Cowboys game, and there's a couple things about the Sixers. I feel like we gotta all discuss right, that maybe right. are a little more relevant to and what's going on. Right. 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 Why, why we're on it? What's what's your Sixers topic that you wanna? All right, so I feel like um, going into the postseason, we were all wondering who was gonna take the next big jump. We haven't seen uh, as much of of Embiid playing in the preseason. Harden looks a little better. He looks a little more athletic. He doesn't look like the Harden that we were hoping or whatever, but he looks pretty good. I think he's facilitating good. The person we need to talk about is Tyrese Maxey because Tyrese Maxey looks like he has taken like another, like the same leap, leap he took from year one to year two. I think he took from year two to year three. He's av- he's only playing uh, a half each game of the preseason, but in the first three preseason, preseason games, he's uh, I think averaging 20 points a half. And I think he might've not missed a three yet. He looks so good. Yeah. And I feel like, with having Tyrese Maxey uh, taking that leap, having Harden be healthier than he was last year, adding in uh, Melton off the bench, adding in uh, P.J. Tucker, adding in uh, Montrez Harrell on on the bench, I think uh, Cork looks healthy. He looks better. I think Isaiah Joe looks better. He looked, he was uh, drilling it from three. I don't know. I think this team's a lot better than it was last year. I think uh, there's reason to be almost as excited about the Sixers as there is uh, for the Eagles. If you had to trade, if you had to trade Tyrese Maxey or Jalen Hurts, what, what would you do? Who would I trade? You get one Jalen Hurts in a heartbeat. Oh my God. That's interesting. Are you uh, kidding me? So I think I... Tyrese Maxey is going to be an all-star. I think, he, I think he's right. Think many, right. many years. And I think he's probably going to be in Philly for the next like 15 years. He's somebody oh, who can be like Kobe, basically. Okay. Marcy, Jackson, Jackson, I, have one comment. I have one comment for you. One comment. Okay. What's up? Oh, are NBA titles won in the preseason? No, but I think player development has... Are you, are, what, what are you trying to say? Do you think that this is a fluke? Are you I'm not saying it's a fluke. Are, oh, are, you, are, you, are you shitting on Jackson's excitement, Josh? I'm not All trying to shit on your three preseason games to go off of, and they're positive. I'm not going to just take a Bro. negative. No, no, you can take. No, no, you can take a positive. I'm not saying you can t- can't take a positive, but like off of three games, telling me that Maxi has made another jump. Like, come on, man. Like he's, it's preseason, he's shooting 80% bro. percent from the field, and he's scored 20 he's points. Preseason. They're playing he's the playing backups. No, he's not. He played. He was playing Durant. 
you hold on. You think that you think the starters are trying in preseason, bro? Oh man. I think, I think it's reason. I think they're reasonably trying, and I think oh. the fact that he's just drilling everything is is a positive. And there's no reason to be negative on the Sixers. They're like as stacked as the Eagles are, if not more. Have the Sixers have the like have this? Okay. I think it's this, right? I'm hyped for the Sixers. We've been teams. Look, I, I am I am pulling for the Sixers. I want them to win, but we have been teased so many times, right? We can look, we can be as hype as we want to be to begin the year. Don't get me wrong, I all for that. But if like that hype results in another first round exit, like nah. they don't get first like, round exit. They get second. All right, second round exit, uh, whatever. Fine, another another second round exit, like bro, like why am I getting hyped for a goddamn preseason game? Okay, like, well the fact that you can't. Understand I mean, that they get injured every year, and you just write it off as them sucking. It's not. I'm not gonna fucking sit here and take that as a real criticism. Like, they, yeah, they lose in the second round, but they also are fucking playing injured in the second round, and they've also in- improved their roster. And I feel like you sitting here just saying like, "Oh, it's too early to tell," or whatever. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to theorize about the, how they could be good, dude. And I think they are gonna be good. There's more signs pointing to them being good this year than bad. They're always good. That's the thing. That's just like, and this is literally what I said. They're always good, but they have not gotten yeah. over the hump. And the point of the process was to get a player that got you over the hump. We have one of those players, and we and haven't built around it. Probably Tyrese Maxey. We got him beat. We, 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 we don't know that. We don't it know looks that. Like it, what do you mean we don't know that? Did you watch him last year? He looked like he was I an all-star last year. He was great. He was great. Yeah, he looked, looked great last year. But th- hold on. Did we get over the hump, though? Did you watch the game? I, the, 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 I don't know, dude. He looks good. He looks good. That's all I'm saying. He looks good. I did put us over the hump. And, I don't, and also, also, shut the fuck up about the hump, dude. We're not <laughs> below the hump. We're past the hump. The hump is if you can win the championship. We can win the championship. We're over the fucking hump. <laughs> I was going to say, if I hear hump one more time, I'm going to shoot myself, dude. Jackson, we, we have not each other. We have the Eagles brain. over the hump because they haven't won the fucking – they lost against the Tampa Bay. I guess they're not over the hump. We shouldn't be excited about them. Not over yeah, the they hump. are. If, if you can win this – if you can win – if you put together a roster that can win a championship, you're over the hump. This is going in the intro. <laughs> oh my god! I, uh, like that's um, like getting to getting over and becoming and like there's le- like getting over and being able to win a championship oh, is different than having a roster to that can compete for championship. I it's want to call the Philly escape pump. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and not get excited about the teams until they win the championship. Then I'm a fucking bandwagoner. I'm not a bandwagoner. I'm saying like we've seen this stuff before. Like I am ex- like what I'm trying to say is this: we can't get so excited. That we, we think this team's gonna win before. it all. They, we have like, never had a team this good. Ben Simmons, buckets, Embiid, and uh, what's his face, Harris. That was our best shot. Disagree, hardcore. Oh man. Whatever. I only get into this. That six just talk. That six just talk. No, I, um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I. I actually agree, Jackson. I've been watching Tyrese's highlights from the preseason. I mean, he looks like he's definitely getting better. So, I mean, he's got stronger. He's shooting better. He looks more. Confident. I think he actually he's is going to in... be like a like a top tier player in the NBA at some point in his career. He said he said that it's he sad. went into the summer knowing what. Now he knows his role. He knows he's a starter. He knows what to do. He knows he's gonna. He's supposed to come in and just be like the electric, uh, the electricity. You know, just power in the offense and he looks like he's doing that yeah and well, we don't yeah. need we don't and we don't need harden to be like the fucking 30 points houston, harden, harden, yeah. houston harden if we have tyrese maxi if he can just facilitate and maxi can be like the scoring part of that and that looks like what's happening yeah no i agree with that I, I, listen i'll, I'll, I'll yeah, say i gotta I'll, see I'll i gotta see half a season before i agree, before i say anything so i mean he I'll could look it. good he could look like he hit the gym but you know if he doesn't produce it just don't matter I mean, I'll, an say, I'll, fucker, dude. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this, and we'll end it here. Tyrese has the work ethic beyond anybody else to become something special. He really does. Um, he could become. But is he something special right now? No. Yes. Yes. He clearly uh, is. He's becoming yeah. something special. No, he's not. He's he isn't something as something special. special. There's a there's a difference between being projected to be special versus already special. Joel yeah, Embiid is and already and special. And the difference was in his first year, he looked like he could have been something special. And his second year, he became something special, and now he's something even more uh, special. He, he, some, might, like, some might even say he's over nah, the hump. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> he is. <laughs> you guys are humping me with that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're the only person in Philadelphia who's not excited about Tyrese. 
No, I, I I am excited about Tyrese. I think he's going to be great. But there's a difference between like okay, what is when this we podcast look at, okay, right now. Oh, hold on, hold on. if you look at the point guards in this in the Eastern Conference, okay, Tyrese is up there for sure. But he is not at the point where he tr- is truly so he's becoming something special. There's a difference between being special, right? Like a special point guard in the Eastern Conference. I'm trying to think right now. Um, I'm not even Kyrie. Um, okay, to me, Lamelo Ball is almost at something special. He is ascending to that, right? I think Maxi is ascending to be something special, but he hasn't done it. That's the point I'm getting at. Like, I am excited for him, but I'm not going to call him something special yet. When he drops, like, 40-point games in playoffs, that's special. Or whatever he was doing. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a special performance, absolutely. But he's got he's to win. There's to be, like... Be, being special means you win and you put up performances. He put up performance and we didn't win. That's fine. Injuries and all, okay. Set aside, right? We get to the playoffs and he, him and Embiid get us through. He is something special. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to call him something. Right now, he is ascending to something special. There is a difference. I don't know, dude. Sixers talks are going to be fucking brutal if you're this fucking pessimistic. They are special players. <laughs> if you can't see it, then you can't see it. I don't know if you don't trust your eyes. He looks special. He can. He is becoming something special. That's my statement. It's not like I don't think he's not special. He is becoming something special. He looks like the best offensive player on our team while we have taking over and who is like the best offensive player in the league. So he's a good. He's a really good number two right now. Is what you're saying? We have probably three of like the top twenty players on our team. Yes, he's the number two on the team. All tw- all three are special. Maybe not top twenty, oh. but like Tyrese is getting right. to be like right. up there. He's ascend. He's you're literally agreeing with my point. He is ascending right now. I think he's not right special now, yet. Is good, he is man. ascending. I think right oh, now Maxi is good. Tyrese Maxi's skill level. He's going to go to the All Star game. He looks like he's going to be somebody who goes to the All Star game almost every single year of his career. He looks like he's going to be better than Bradley Beal is now, and I think he's going to be an All Star for the Sixers like seven, eight times. Oof. Okay, I'm not going to dissect that Bradley Somebody who take. improves that much in between their first season and their second season. He went from like 30% uh, three-point shooting to 40% and then shows in their first few preseason games that they've improved again. I, any, if you look at his interviews, he looks like all he does, or it sounds like all he does is go into the gym and work. He know, he's, he's smart. He knows what he needs to work on. He's improving his game so that he can be better fitted to the offense so that he can score better. He's putting on muscle so that he can... Uh, score through contact he's getting better at defense he's getting better at passing i just don't see how you can see somebody who's that good shown that they can improve drastically in between each season shows that they want to improve drastically in between each season i don't like yeah i guess they're becoming special but i think that's somebody who is special all right let me cut in and take what jackson's saying and kind of mold it with harshes because i think we can all agree in in some some kind of spot so He's Listen, not better than Brad Beal. I'm going to say that right now. Maybe not right now, but looking at Tyrese Maxey, if I were to predict anybody were to ascend to become that kind of special, he is that guy. Like, if I'm going to make that oh, prediction. Absolutely. 100%. If I'm going to make that prediction, you know, it's going to be Tyrese Maxey. Based on his work ethic, he's going to be that guy. Um, maybe he's not special to the point of being a top seven guy, a top ten guy in the league yet. That's literally my point. But to yes. Jackson's point, I also Your see him. Your players is too small. Or special players. Okay, so, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, Please, all right, hold on. Where, no, 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 right no. now, right now, where would you put where... Harsha, I'm talking. What, like, this is, like, so, all right, whatever. Okay. I'm, I think he's, like, I'm done. Who's, who's this talking? Tyrese Halliburton level, which I think is special. Okay, fair. Tyrese right. Halliburton is not special. And Tyrese Halliburton is what, getting that. That's, that's why we, we agree we're just not in the same level of agreement. So, it's okay you know, not Jackson, to agree, guys, by the way. Jackson, Jackson has a wider range of special, wider than Harsh's, and I think he'll move from Jackson's range now to Harsh's range in the future, if I were to make a prediction. Is he at the point right now where, you know, he's at the level of taking over a game like Joel, LeBron, or KD? No. But, you know, five, you know, three plus years down the line, could he get to that point? Why not? Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to argue our way to a championship this year. So right. I, 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 you, I, gets us okay. a ring this year, okay. I will be jumping up and down. Like, so, uh, 
33 to 14 Eagles. That's what I say. Oh. You're going right to Eagles? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, listen, I I just can't wait for the first Sixers game now. (laughs) 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 That's going to be... It's going to be one game. It's going to be one game. But it's gonna. I I think we're gonna have some fun arguing, fucking some six. Absolutely, dude. Basketball is like my first. Basketball and baseball were like my first loves, and then I got into football. So ja- Jackson got le- legitimately angry here. So I'm glad we can make up. I love the, the emotions. I love the emotions. I'm not oh. angry at Harsha. I just. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> None I'm of that. Was... Passionate about my points, dude. Okay. Like yeah, okay. Right. Okay. 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 All right. Um, I'll trade you Nick Chubb. Okay. Eagles Dallas predictions. <laughs> Let's do that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mitch, I, Mitch Shubb one more time. I'm gonna freak out. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna say my prediction last week or some along the same lines. I think this is wait. gonna pan out to be a, a wait, blowout. Kareem Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Cordero Patterson. This this <laughs> this, pod, this pod podcast Shubb is just <laughs> big Nick energy. Close it down. Nice. Close it. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Close it down. Close it down. This pod's really gotten away from us, guys. I, I, I can't. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> we oh gotta predict God. it. We gotta predict the Cowboys. Say a prediction. Say a prediction. What? No, right. no analysis. Just say a number. I, I'm. I can't. Twenty seven, twenty four. Cameron Dicker hits the game winner. Oh man. Dicker winner. Dicker winner. All right. Um, Dicker winner. Yeah. I kind of like that prediction. Actually, that's. I was gonna go with the same thing or something right like that. I'll go. I'll be a little different. I'll go twenty four, twenty one. Okay, close one. Yeah, it's gonna be close. The game. I'm gonna say twenty-four to nine. Okay. I think honestly, I don't think they're gonna be able to run against us. I don't think they're gonna be able to pass against us. I think they're gonna score a field goal early. They're gonna have to try and catch up late. They're gonna um go for two, they're gonna miss it, and then we're gonna take the ball and we're just gonna run run the clock out. Like right, you know, when you said that number, position. I thought when you said that number, I thought you were gonna say Dallas is gonna score a touchdown, miss the extra point, and then score a field goal. And that, uh, you know, that's I was waiting for something. Of course, they missed the two points, though. Okay. So All right. I have another bold prediction for my game, if I may. No, oh, go ahead. Did I cut you off? You didn't get one yet? No. No, no, you're good. I got one. Thanks, though. Um, no, I was gonna say I think uh, I think Tyrese Maxey. Um, <laughs> Uh, no. All right, all right. So, do me a favor, Brits, and kick Harsha from the <laughs> chat. Sorry, he's actually making an appearance on national TV. <laughs> what if he actually does Sunday night? <laughs> <laughs> he might be. He might be. Oh my god. Then, uh, oh he my makes god. a special appearance on national TV. <laughs> yeah, they're they're going to introduce him as a very special player. Right? He's going to be our new kicker. <laughs> They'll put him on the hump. <laughs> uh, He's gonna be on the mound for the Phillies. <laughs> oh. All right. I'm sorry. He, the he threw the first pitch that one game. All right. You get him off the hump. Oh my god. Okay. All right. All right. Predictions are in. Phil- Eagles are gonna win. Okay. We're gonna go six and zero. Uh, Let's. Uh... Yeah, go ahead. All right, take, it away. Take, it away. take it away. No, take it I'm away. Blood. Take it away. I'm, I don't know if we should wrap up with our fun skit that we do. It's you guys just can't even. You guys can uh, stop for a minute without hey, well, mentioning well, Max. Well, <laughs> just one, one player. All right, no. If you no, mention Maxi, no, 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 no. If you mention yeah, Maxi, you're gonna Maxie. drop we'll Maxi. I if you, okay, if I mention Maxi, I'll drop Nick Chubb. If he mentions Maxi, the pod goes immediately you heard off. Him. If, if you if you mention Maxi, you give me Chubb and I give you Hurst. That's the trade, and it can't I'll be vetoed. Veto. And, and it can't be vetoed. Unbeatable. <laughs> Unbeatable. Okay. All right. Let's get, in, let's get into it. All right. NFC East. We've been waiting for this one. NFC East because we're facing Dallas this week. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Say really? the birds, okay. We'll say the best for last, and we'll start with the worst. The Dallas Cowboys, Ooh. America's team. Stars and stripes. Jerry Jones. Cowboys. Jerry Jones is my answer. Dallas Cowboys, man. <laughs> Jerry I was Jones. thinking about doing Jerry Jones is my answer. answer. It's probably the answer. Oh my god. Jerry Bag of Bones Jones. Bones Jones. <laughs> Jerry. Good old Jerry. That's <laughs> that Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones. Do we do we elect to skip uh skip answer because we hate the Cowboys? 
Hey, nah, so, hold, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Now nah, we got to be true. Come on. We got men of the team. Come on. Come on. Gonna, here, I'll go first on this one. I'm going to go Tony Romo because I think, you know, as an Eagles fan, didn't like him, you know. Dude, I mean, look, here's the thing, though. Tony Romo was, like, he was very, very good. Like, he did have his bad moments, but, like, you got to give the man some props. Like, very good quarterback. I mean, Tony Romo is, was better than everybody expected him to be. I think he was, what, undrafted or something? <laughs> yeah, undrafted. So, You're really I mean, some compliments there, bro. So, I, that, that's all I'll really give him. But I'll, I'll go with – um. There's two guys that I always think of. I, I'll go with Emmett Smith, just because. Yeah. Just because I I'm, I don't have the, the wherewithal to give him a player that I actually had to see play against the Eagles. So, yeah. I'll go I'll go with Emmett Smith. I mean, he's a legendary got, running back. I mean, Hall of Famer. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one player and one moment in my mind. I've got uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Jason Witten. I was my the man one. who uh, that was my looked like one. a 40 year old fucker for like 12 <laughs> years in the league never looked athletic always big and fat and he never and was then, he <laughs> never, re- never really was yeah he sure. was never that I, he I just like always had, he wasn't that great they just threw it to him i don't know he just always ended up being open somehow and yeah that's all it, and then yeah. probably because they were like let's cover everybody else this guy's not gonna do anything <laughs> yeah. and then he threw it to him but then and the moment in my head that i have is i guess kind of an amalgamation but just that one moment sums it up. It was his announcing career because he tried oh, to God. follow uh, Tony Romo's footsteps and then he picked up that trophy by like, the wrong <laughs> part and, like, and totally snapped it. That's true. Uh, yeah, people it. forget that he that he did try to announce for a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, I'm going to wrap us up on the Cowboys with just Troy Aikman just because I feel like he represents... Oh, he's the perfect yeah, like oh model God. citizen of the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Like... You know, yeah. quarterback brought us the Super Bowl. I think he makes I me know. hate the Cowboys even more. I, yeah, I hate, I hate him. And listening to him on TV, I just hate him more. I really did. I, so much Cowboys bias just, whenever they play. Just dis- the, one- the one Cowboy I actually like is Michael Irvin, I think. Well, I was going to say the one thing that's nice yeah. about um, – what's his face? Uh, Aikman was that, like, at least they are trying to promote, like, CTE safety by putting him on air so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh man! I think we, I think we have to cut he that. Said that was such a dry face too. I think we, I think we might, we might have to cut that. Rich. <laughs> I don't think we have to cut that. I don't think we have to cut that. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Oh, yeah, oh, oh no! Oh god! Here, man. That's uh, maybe the best joke Max has ever made. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, all right, all right. Go to the next one. Go to the next team. All right, let's see what's going on. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I know what's going on. I just don't know if I should laugh. <laughs> Hold on to your butts, uh, Harsha. Pull it together. Sorry, Pull it together. Um, okay. Washington Commanders. Washington Commanders. <laughs> Pull it together, Arsha. Jeez. Come on, we got five to finish, dude. What is this, Bob? Come on. <laughs> All right, I'm good. All right, Commanders, Commanders, I'm good. I'm good. All right. Then you have a name or what? This team is so wait, 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 wait. This is this is all Washington team history, not right? Not just this Commanders yeah, team. All just okay. Washington. Yeah, 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 all Washington. I actually, I actually got a good name. I think you, you couldn't you couldn't come up with a name for for. No, I'm dead serious. I have a name. Um, Super Bowl MVP, quarterback. Um, one of the first. You know, come to come out of one of the HBCUs, Doug Williams. Um, I don't think he gets enough credit as a signal caller. Um, you know where he came from, and then also the fact that he had such a sustained success with the uh, the Washington Commanders. So, Doug Williams is my name. Le- leave it to Harsha to go <laughs> and literally, literally come back and do it within two seconds. Say a name we all don't know, and just be like, <laughs> my, my my. I actually have a guy too that I don't think you guys gonna know either but i remember seeing them all the time when we played against them or i think it was when we played against them maybe i'm thinking of a different time period but remember chris cooley yeah, yeah. Chris cooley? the yeah. nfl reebok commercial with him yeah chris remember cooley when he was uh, just yeah. having to have a cool nice name you know like yeah. as a kid <laughs> literally like literally, <laughs> literally literally a cool ass name yeah 
Yeah. Oh my God! Remember when he caught a ball through the wall? In the no, fantasy commercials. Fantasy. fantasy uh, yeah. Oh, is that what, me. Is that what that was him? The one where yeah. he just fucking like grabs it like that. Okay. Uh, he, he, he caught punched, it through he a wall. Just through a wall and catches it. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That Kool Aid man. Kool Aid. It's, it's a good, <laughs> good one. Um. Do you miss uh, that? That's a good one. You I can't just... say you can't say trot, can you? He was he was Eagles. Ah, he was no, 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 yeah, no. How many years did he spend with the with Washington? Like two. Let's see. Two. Trotter. Sean yeah. Alexander or whatever. Or no. Sean John Taylor. You're thinking of I think. Sean Taylor. Sean, Sean Taylor. Yeah, Sean Taylor. That's, I saw, that's the one I want to find him with Mets. Right, yeah, that's a good one. I, I was thinking about just going. I'll just go. I think I might just go Wentz. I feel like at this point in his career, he just kind of really. Defines what the bodies, commanders are all about. Your bodies, the Washington team. <laughs> all right, so then we can throw RG three in there. Uh, RG three was uh, at least good, man. He had the sub. He had the subway deal going. He had a couple really good seasons, I thought. So, so as much as we're gonna, uh, as much as we're gonna hate on RG three, right? Like, I do think his career would be a lot different if Shanahan didn't force him to play through that torn knee. Oh yeah. Um, in that playoff game, I think that was a career yeah. finding thing he shouldn't have done. Yeah. Well, yeah, RG three was, was special at that point. It really, yeah. really did ruin his career. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, that, that team was good. RG three, Alfred Morris, I thought was really good. Yeah, I think was Santana Moss yeah. there. Who they had from the outside? Oh uh, wait, yeah, Santana Moss, dude. Who was the? Uh, hey, Pierre Garcon. Garcon is a good name. Pierre Garcon. Who was their? Uh, who was their one return man for so long? It was. Uh, I who's, the, who's who's the corner that DeAndre Hopkins like broke his ankles? Oh, D'Angelo Hall. D'Angelo Hall. That's D'Angelo a good Hall. Yeah, Come a on, good practice. Name. Practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trent Williams too, I think, you know, I Trent Williams, that's a that's a good name. Yeah. I mean he's had a great renaissance in SF and they've taken care of him. Good pull by you. Um Can't think of much here, to be honest. Really can't think. I feel like defensive guys, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson there for a bit. Yeah, I was say, yeah. London, London Fletcher spent a lot of a lot of time there. So you might I was gonna say London Fletcher. Yeah, that's a, that's a good name. I was the gonna one say that I name. remember is uh, Antoine Randall L. I, I remember more for the Steelers. Yeah, I thought yeah, he was more of a Steelers, Steeler. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know he had a couple years from... as, as on the Redskins. He might have. Yeah, he had like a year or two. But I remember him more being a Steeler. If anything. All right. Really? All right. Washington sucks. Let's move on. New York Giants. Some good names on this one. I think the easy one for me as a kid, the first guy I think about when they, at like the 2000, probably what, 2004, 2002, Tiki Barber. Tiki, I yeah. Hate Tiki Barber. Yeah. That would be my I just used uh, to hate yeah. watching that guy run the ball, man. Just, he was good, dude. He, he always good. beat us up. He was I'm just going to get it out there, throw it out, dude. Eli Manning. As, as an Eagles fan, I hated him. Now that he's off the Giants. I freaking love Eli Manning. He's, great Eli Manning. <laughs> he's he, like yeah. the treasure of the NFL. He's so freaking innocent and funny. I don't know. I love I love him. I saw that one uh YouTube video where he pretended to be a college or like a um, He pretended to be a Penn State walk on yeah, Chad yeah. Powers. I yeah. watched that episode, it was really funny. <laughs> oh, did Jackson just freeze? Oh, Jackson just freeze. That's oh, a good freezing move. Jackson, this pod right, is Jackson's just... promoting CTE. <laughs> oh, oh no, he just developed it for oh himself. My god, dude. Oh my god. All right, let's wrap okay. this up, man. Let's, let's wrap this up. Okay, great. Well, I think one of the, an answer is LT. That's for sure. Uh, but oh, I said there's a good one. Oh, Jackson's back. Um, I, I also <laughs> think when I I, do, I will say when I think of the Giants, um, I do think of like just the receivers for the most part. Plexico Burris, Amari, Amani Tumor, Amani or Mar, Amani Tumor, Amani Tumor, Victor Cruz. Um, Victor Cruz. I feel like all these guys. Obviously, you got Beckham. I just feel like I think of just receivers for some reason. Yeah, they've some, always had decent re- receivers. Some decent name receivers that they've had. I mean, Odell's yeah. obviously. There's one. The best. There's one guy who I'm gonna go with here, uh, Jeremy Shockey. I think. Oh, yeah, that's Shockey. a good name. That's a good name. That's the, yeah, that's Shockey, was, Shockey. Like, was a stud. With the um, yep. with the Giants, I mean, you talk about the defensive ends too, right? That the Super Bowl teams, it was all built on the defensive line. I mean, Strahan, Yumanura, Matthias Kiwanuka, yeah, a couple guys up the middle, right? Like I think that um, those defenses were just nasty. Yeah, we said Michael yeah. Strahan yet? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Strahan, yeah. yeah. 
And last Sorry, but not least, excited about Eli. Last but not <laughs> least, I'm going to take it first. Best Eagles player of all time, Brian Dawkins. Of course, you would take it first. Take Dawkins. My, my favorite, Dawkins. my favorite uh, Eagle from back then was the uh, is Brian Westbrook. Brian Westbrook, great answer. Jeez. Lido Sheldon taking him. Of course, you a little favorite high Eagle of all that. time. That's a, such a tough question. You guys have it. Best I, I, Eagle of all time is Brian Dawkins. My favorite from mind. that era that we, I think we're all thinking of was Brian Westbrook. I love that guy, dude. Love that. We guy. don't have to go to that era. I know, but like he I, was I, under. I, he was really yeah. underrated. Yeah, that he era. Was. All right. So he who's was. actually the best Eagle of all time? Is it Reggie White? It's Nick Foles, dude. I know. I know you're gonna say that. Huh? It probably no, is though. No, but in actuality. In actuality. Um, I mean, Reggie White is like almost impossible not to pick. But I mean, the man had like 197 sacks, like yeah, in his career. Yeah, I mean, it's probably what Reggie White or Nick McNabb, right? Or B Doc, one of the three. McNabb's McNabb. for sure. You have to for sure put McNabb in there, dude. You have to. In the, in the top, 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 top three, he's the, the best QB of our franchise. He's the best QB. Yeah, he's the best QB in franchise history. You guys take him over Randall? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would too. I mean, McNabb, mm, McNabb brought us the four straight NFC Championship games. Yeah, McNabb was, a, McNabb was an absolute stud. Yeah. I think, I, you know what, honestly, I was going to name, I was thinking about all these people I wanted to name. I was like, maybe Kelsey, maybe y'all go Sheldon Brown. Uh, I don't know. I was thinking a bunch of random people, but you know what, I will go. I'll go McNabb. I think McNabb, even though McNabb is a piece of shit and he <laughs> fucking hates, uh, he can't give yeah. anybody else uh, credit because he wants all the he freaking wants... Uh, respect for himself and nobody else, but yeah. yeah. You know, what? actually, no. I'm not fucking giving it to him. He, uh, that's exactly what McNabb wants is for me to give it to him. Talking about it. <laughs> I'm giving it to. Uh, I'm, I'm Jason giving it to Kelsey. Kelsey. I'm Jason giving it to Kelsey. Kelsey. I think he's got that. You can definitely say Jason Kelsey, and nobody would be like mad. About you know what? That. You know what? Screw it. I'm giving it to not Dante Stallworth. Not only am I giving it to Kelsey. Dante Stallworth. Dante Stallworth. Dante Stallworth. In the ah. I used to have his oh, jersey. Yeah, dude. I had his jersey. Yeah. Had him for like a oh, year. I love, it. I love it. He came from the Saints, right? Yeah. Yeah, he got him from the Saints. Um. Standing on the wide receiver lines, I think this guy, I think when I was a kid, like, I think the media crucified him. I think more and more now with, like, podcasts and, like, athletes kind of trying to tell their side of the story, I think his true sides kind of come out, and you kind of see the, the quote-unquote, lack of the BS he was dealing with. Uh, T.O. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, of course. I almost said his name, too. Love, love T.O. T- Team T.O. over Donovan. Over Donovan T.O.'s the man. Yeah, T.O.'s yeah. the man. I think Hello. if we know what we know now, I think we should have kept T.O. and just told McNabb to take a hike. Like, or just I, told what... McNabb to chill out, dude. Yeah, yeah. just chill out. Yeah, just it was chill weird, out. that situation. Yeah, um, and I think another guy who deserves to mention, Chad Lewis. Um, I'll always remember 2004 NFC Championship yeah. game. We we lost T.O. Everyone said we were done. Lewis goes and catches two touchdowns and breaks his leg and gets us the Super Bowl. Like, And that was the year like we were like, this is our year. We need to do this. Um, yeah, Chad Lewis was a good tight end. Yeah, he wasn't bad. Yeah, shout out Chad Lewis. A um, couple names, Jeremiah Trotter, obviously, and then Takiyo Spikes, I liked. Takiyo Spikes. Spikes was good. Yeah. yeah. Also, I don't want to, I, I, I'm not going to say he was like a great tight end or whatever. I actually feel like he was maybe like average the entire time. And I also think that's kind of what the Eagles were for such a long time was average uh, from like the entire span of his career except for last year. Dude, Brent Selleck. Uh, I feel like defined the Eagles yeah. for a while. Yeah, he's, he's the right, most yeah. eagle eagle of that era. Eagle eagle. <laughs> he is the most birdity bird. Um, AJ Feely, honorable mention. AJ Feely, right. honorable mentions. You're not gonna go with Feely, but not Acres. Uh, Acres, Acres is a good one. Acres, I Jeff Garcia. Acres, Jeff Garcia. Acres, is, Jeff Garcia <laughs> came in, did well in the playoffs, yeah. got knocked out still. Um, Tim Curtis, no. Ryan Motes, <laughs> Ryan Motes, Deuce uh, Daly, Deuce, Daly. The Deuce, yeah, that's a good Deuce one. Daly didn't him. How do we sure. forget for this long? Carell, <laughs> Carell Buckhalter, yeah. Buckhalter, yeah. Honestly, though, at this point, when you think of the Eagles today, do you, think, do you think of Howie? Nah. No. Okay. All right, re- re- <laughs> rephrase the question. When you think of the Eagles today, yeah, who do you think of then? If it's not Howie. Howie might be the face of the franchise at this point. I think of, oh, I think of Jason Kelsey, it. I think of Lane Johnson, I think of Jalen Hurts, I think of uh, 
It's not Jalen. Jalen's not the answer. Jalen's not there yet. All right. Well, he might get Wayne there, Johnson, but he's not Jason there yet. Jason Kelsey. Uh, yeah. Parker Cox. BG. Um, BG. BG is a great answer. I That's think. A it, great I know he's only been on the team for a couple years. Darius Slay. I mean, Slay. No, I like him. Those. I like him, but not face, tonight. Yet. Face of the team in the in franchise, it probably it has to be Kelsey. Yeah, it is. It has to be Kelsey. It's Kelsey. How he did. I gave it to Kelsey for the tally. Slay is a big taste of that defense, um, though, man. Like, he's the guy on that defense. Yeah, of course. Of course. He's, he's, the, he's the personality on the defense. He's the personality yeah, you need. Think, but, like, he's only been here, what, two, three years now? Like, I think it's the third you know, year. he's not like a – yeah, he's, he hasn't been here. Like, yeah, just give it to it, time. It would be BG over over Fletch on defense, and it would be Kelsey with Lane as a close second. Yeah. I think yeah. I think you guys are all picking all the marionettes that the, the real face of the franchise is putting on a puppet show with. Uh-huh. Oh my god! And and who uh who uh controls him? Jeff Jeffrey Lurie. So uh, nobody does, dude. <laughs> nobody controls. He's, he's if, Lurie, if Lurie says, gotcha. if Lurie even says a word to Howie, Howie freaking pops him right in the face. Just, just, um, he says, "I'm the Super Bowl champion." Maybe give, you guys give him a under, little bump on the hump. Underrated <laughs> face of the franchise, Jeff Stoutlin. I think with some of the work he's Ooh, done with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, unsung, yeah. unsung hero, like honestly. More. Tyrese Maxey. All right. All right. All right. All right. No, yeah, he, he, mentioned, he yeah. mentioned Tyrese Maxey. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Bye. All right. Launch, Landon. Right. See you guys later.